Hey there, Life Groups. Welcome to week three of Know Better, Grow Better. This week, we're talking about the power of habits. Because it's not a matter of if we have habits, the real question is, do our habits help us or hold us back from becoming the best versions of ourselves? Before we break up into our life groups to discuss the habits we wanna change, first, let's take a step back and ask the bigger question, do you believe that you have the power to change? I mean, let's face it, we can create the best plan in the world for change, but if deep down inside, you don't believe that you can change, you won't change. So I wanna try a little experiment with you. Uh, hop into my time sheet machine with me, and we're gonna travel five years into the future to meet future you. Here we are, 2028. The Cardinals have just won the Super Bowl. 347 has expanded to eight lanes of traffic. Life is good. Now, before we get out and meet future you, one quick question. On a scale of one to 10, how confident are you that you will be the me that you want to be in the future? Maybe a four, a six, a nine? If you answered anything less than a 10, before you face future you, you need to face some false beliefs. Let me give you four lies that hold us back from experiencing the change that God wants to do in our lives. Lie number one, I have nothing to offer. If there is a part of you that believes you have nothing to offer, don't feel bad, <laughs> you're in good company. Moses thought that he had nothing to offer because he didn't talk so good. Gideon thought he had nothing to offer because he was the smallest person in the smallest family in the smallest tribe in Israel. Esther thought she had nothing to offer because she had no power and no voice. Jeremiah thought he had nothing to offer because he was just a kid and no one listened to him. Peter thought he had nothing to offer after he denied Jesus three times. The point is, just because you believe you have nothing to offer doesn't mean that it's true. It has been said that God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. So the next time that you hear that voice whisper that you have nothing to offer, you need to combat that lie with the truth. I have something to offer because I am created and called by God. Lie number two, someone else is more fill in the blank. This lie comes from the trap of comparison. And we all know there's no win in comparison. They don't win because the comparison sets them up on a pedestal from which they're eventually going to fall. And you don't win because comparison sets you up to compete in a game that is impossible to win. God didn't just put you on this planet to be a duplicate version of someone else. He put you here to be an original version of you. Ephesians 2.10 tells us, we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Now, what is a masterpiece? It's unique, it's original, it's one of a kind. Now, you might not be like the person that you compare yourself to, but you are exactly who God created you to be. Is there room for you to grow? You bet there is. Are you a finished product right now? No, not yet. Masterpieces take time to perfect. But you will never reach the perfect version of yourself if you spend your whole life wishing that you were someone that you're not. If you struggle with the lie that God wants to use someone else more than you, you need to replace that lie with this truth. God perfectly designed me to be the one and only best version of me. Lie number three, I've made too many mistakes. If there's anything the gospel teaches us, it's that your past does not define you. The Bible is the story of God using broken and wounded people for his glory. Think about it. Jacob was a liar. Rahab was a prostitute. David was an adulterer. Jonah was a quitter. Matthew was a traitor. Paul was a murderer. Just to name a few. Here's what the Bible says is true about you. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. If you feel guilt and shame about your past, that is not from God. That is from the enemy. You don't have to battle your guilt and shame on your own. Ask for help. Ask a friend. Ask a pastor. Ask a counselor. 
reach out to someone sooner rather than later. Trust me, you'll be so glad you did. Because there is no shame or guilt that God cannot redeem for good. If you feel trapped by the lie that your past must define your future, I want you to replace that lie with the truth that God's grace is greater than my guilt. Lie number four, I cannot change. Maybe you've tried to change, not just once, not twice, but over and over and over and over and over again. If that's you, just remember the Sistine Chapel wasn't painted in a day. It took years. And like we said, God is forming a masterpiece in you. You are not a paint by numbers project. You are the Mona Lisa. And that kind of transformation doesn't happen overnight. The deep lasting kind of change that we all hope for, that takes time. And the real authentic change that we want does not happen without setbacks. When it comes to knowing better and growing better, the journey is just as important as the destination. If you're serious about seeking change in your life, do not walk through that journey alone. Find other people that you trust that are on a similar journey. It's like the African proverb says, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. One of the big reasons why I believe you can change is because of where you're sitting right now. You are already surrounding yourself with people that are gonna support you, encourage you, and speak the truth to you. If you try to get from where you are to where you wanna be in just one day, you will fail. But if you ask God to show you the next right step, and the next one after that, and the next one after that, he will take you farther than you ever thought you could go. If you struggle with the lie that I cannot change, it's time to replace that lie with the truth that with God's help, change is possible and my future is bright. Okay, are you ready to meet future you? That journey starts right now as you talk about the next steps with your life group.